Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, I wanna talk about 10 things that I like to do to prep the camera gear for a commercial shoot. We're about to head over the hill, about an hour and a half drive over to Blenheim to shoot a testimonial video for a coffee franchise. And I thought this would be a great opportunity to show you behind the scenes of how I prep the camera gear and just get ready, I guess, to turn up to set uh, prepared uh, with all the right gear and redundancies in place to always get the best shots possible. So let's get into it. The first thing that I like to do to prep is to just have a quick meeting with the producer or the director for the project to ensure that we're on the same page creatively and we are, I guess, going on set with a consistent vision of how the visuals are gonna look. For example, are the interviews that we're shooting going to be on sticks on a tripod? Or are they gonna be more in situ interviews where we're roaming around a facility, maybe on an easy rig and sort of a walk talk type interview setup. All these questions are really helpful to have at least a week beforehand so that we know what we're prepping on set. We also don't want to get to the point where we don't know what's on set so we have to take every type of equipment possible just in case we're going to need it. So the more refined we can have our shot lists and the creative treatment for a project, the better prepared we're going to be and the less equipment we have to manage. On a smaller shoot, you might be the director as a camera operator and DP. This is great because you do have creative freedom on the shoot, but what is important is just to consciously go through the types of shots that you want to achieve on set and just prepare accordingly. Number two is to check out the production schedule that the producer has put together. If you have a good producer working with you, they'll produce something that looks a bit like this, which is a production schedule and it essentially outlines the layout of the day and talks about all of the flow of talent and crew and where people need to be at certain times when the call time is. Uh, for me, I like to include all of the interview questions and the key shots that we need to capture for the project. And then of course, there's all of the important contact details for crew and for talent and then also for your client. All right, so number three is a really practical thing, but the day before, make sure that all of your batteries are charged. In the studio, we have a left to right system, so all of the dead batteries come in on the left-hand side of our shelves. They pass through all of the charges and then they get put into a ready-to-go box on the right-hand side with all of the fresh batteries. And so the day before, I move into the studio and make sure all of the batteries are charged for all of the gear and equipment needed on set for the next day. Number four is prepping all of our media storage for our camera. In this case, we're rigging out the Ursa Mini Pro 4.6K G2 with the SSD caddy on the back. And so in this case, we're prepping 2.5 inch SATA SSDs for the Ursa Mini Pro. What we wanna do the day before is prep every single drive and format them for the shoot so that on the set, we are not formatting any drives. So simply what we do is insert the first drive then go into the menu and format that drive and reset the roll number. So in this case, we're changing the roll number to A001 for the first drive. We'll go ahead and format that. Once the drive is removed, we will label it A001 along with the project ID and then the DP name. This is important because when these drives get back to the office, there are often many different projects being ingested at the same time. And so it's important to have the physical drive labeled clearly so it avoids any confusion in post-production. For this particular shoot, I'm gonna go ahead and format six different SSDs to ensure that I've got ample amount of storage for this shoot. Once we have these drives sorted, we can move on to step five, which is to build out or rig out our camera for the particular shoot we are preparing for. Again, this is a step where every single shoot is different. And in our studio, we like to strip down the camera to store it. And we have a whole shelf full of accessories, which we can build out our camera with. And what this will do is ensure that you're really thinking through the shoot that you're prepping for. A lot of the time we don't need a fully rigged out camera depending on the shoot. And so this allows us to start from the camera body and build out the camera accordingly. In this case, I'm building this Ursa Mini Pro 4.6K G2 camera out for an easy rig. And so I do like to have quite a bit of weight on the camera to give the easy rig a really nice flow of motion. If you wanna know more about this setup, you can check out this video here, which is linked and I explain a bit more about the easy rig. 
as we're rigging out our camera within our studio, we rig it out on a second table on the right hand side. And this allows us to pull the equipment from the left hand table, move it over to the right hand table to prep the gear. And this allows us to isolate any of the gear that we need for our camera for this particular shoot. The worst thing to do is set up a camera on a really messy desk and then when we go to pack the camera down we could easily forget or misplace an item that's really important for our rig. Number six, because this is a shoot that we're using the Easy Rig for, I like to open up the Easy Rig and actually prep the camera with the Easy Rig, get it nice and balanced, and ensure that what I'm holding when I've got the Easy Rig on is exactly what I will need on shoot. By putting on the Easy Rig and attaching the camera and just moving around the studio, capturing a couple of sample shots, it's a really easy way to ensure that the camera is set up in a way that you will need on set. Sometimes I've forgotten to do this or I just haven't had time to prep the Easy Rig properly. And then when I turn up to set, I've realized that there's something really critical missing on the camera. So in my opinion, it's important to fully rig out the camera and set it up entirely with the Easy Rig and the setup that you want on set just to troubleshoot any issues beforehand. Okay, so moving on to number seven, now that we have our camera prepped, we have all of our batteries charged, and then we have all of our media formatted, we need to remember this motto, redundant everything. So now's a good time to do a once over of your entire camera setup and make sure that there is redundancy for every point of failure on the camera. When we're on set and we have something break down on us, we want to be able to replace it quickly to reduce the amount of downtime on set. For example, if I'm looking at this particular setup, what if this SDI cable breaks or fails on me and I lose my monitor? And so I'm going to pack a spare SDI cable. The same goes for the power. What if the DTAP to DC power cable breaks or gets snagged? And so I want to pack a redundant option for everything to do with the camera. Number eight, don't forget to pack all of the tools that you required to build your rig. This is another reason why I like to completely build my rig beforehand because I isolate all of the gear on that second table. Every tool that I use to assemble the camera, I like to isolate as well and ensure that that is packed in the gear bag as well. There are so many times where I have forgotten to carry these tools to set and if something breaks or needs to be adjusted on set, the tools are going to be essential to achieving those modifications. So just take a note of all the tools that you're using to assemble the camera and then go through your entire rig and ask yourself, do I have tools for every single aspect of this camera if I need to adjust it? So number nine, now that I have the camera fully rigged up with all the tools and redundant items in place, I then pack down the camera using the tools into a single hard case ready for shooting. I pack the camera down in this way to ensure that everything I've just prepped is safe in a single hard case. Once everything is in the hard case, I put a padlock on it to ensure that no one messes with it and it is ready and safe for the shoot the next day. So what we have now is a couple of hard cases in the corner of the studio with a padlock on it ready to go for the next day. I know that in these hard cases, there is everything I need to produce the results that the director or producer want me to produce as a camera operator. And I'm confident that there's also all the tools I need to set the camera up and there's redundancy if things do go wrong. Okay, so now the final 10th thing is to go home and get some sleep. This might seem like a bit of a cop out, but there are so many times where I haven't slept very well the night before a shoot. And that's simply because I haven't done the prep and I haven't trusted the system I have in place to make sure that I've got all of the gear prepped. If you're finding it hard to sleep the night before, it's probably because you're thinking about the shoot and worrying about certain aspects of the shoot. Oh, do I have this piece of gear prepped? Oh, I need to make sure that I charge this in the morning. Or I need to make sure that I prep that. If you haven't done the prep well the night before or even a couple of days before with those cases closed with the padlock on it in the corner of the studio knowing that everything is ready to go it's really difficult to rest and uh, sleep well the night before. All right, so there we have it. I hope that was helpful in giving you some insight into my process. It's a really simple process, but a lot of the time, the simpler the process, the better and the more efficient it becomes. So if you're preparing for your next shoot, good luck, and I'm sure you are going to smash it. Speaking of smashing it, why don't you smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, and be sure to leave a comment in the comment box below of this video. 
I'd love to hear your feedback uh, for future videos. But for now, we will see you in the next one. Peace out.